Hey guys, in today's video, uh, I want to show you some two brass, uh, brass engines that I just got. These are the Central Vermont 280s by NJ Custom Brass, the M3A version. Uh, this one right here is the Coffin Feed Water Heater, which is a bit more detailing, and then this is the Alesco Feed Water Heater. Uh, a lot of engines had the a lot of engines had the Alesco, like the a lot of the, some of the CNO. 282s, a lot of the New York Central engines, but not as many had the coffin. I mean, there was some New Haven or there was some 210, there was some 2102s that had them, and then there, well, there was the Sunset 282 for Rio, uh, not Rio Grande, Denver and Salt Lake. That's the engine. So I, I guess we'll start with this one. So this has a more conventional look, I guess. Uh, can see foamed in perfect condition and uh, you got all little screws and stuff and a little replacement tea washer for the thing uh, the hex driver with all the little screws to probably put the couplers on uh, I have a little assume this is the weight oh my God. Uh, that, that's weird, but there's that little piece, it looks very small to be a weight, so I don't know if it does anything helpful. Zoom in a little bit here. So here we have the tender. Uh, you can see, you can see. Always like little details like that, you know, makes someone like me happy. You know, you can see there's a little grid under there. Uh, it's a really nice tender, very interesting, very interesting shape. Uh, not a particular, not a particularly special tender, but you can see it has the sound holes drilled in the bottom, and this. Engine uh, did not come with sound, but I mean, they can pretty, probably eat pretty easily put a decoder in it. I don't know. Kind of engine, I think, if you did that, it's a collector's piece, and you lose some value. Here we go. Here we have the engine itself. So you can see how it's the Alesco. I mean, it's a Beautiful engine, super detailed, no soldering problems. Uh, okay, you can see it's got a sound cam, which you can't really, don't really have to use on the on a decoder. I uh, got a back head detail. Uh, these do have a can motor since they were 1991, but oh, that flops up. Um, but these do, these have a sound cam, you can see, uh, don't really use sound cams anymore, just cause you can kind of adjust some of the CDs on the coders to make it run right. Uh, the reason that a lot of these old brass engines had sound cams is for a PFM sound. PFM sound, you needed it, you couldn't just run it without it, you needed a sound cam for it to work, which is why some of like the Tenshoto engines and uh, later engines, uh, engines later did that. I don't know why the United engines didn't do that. I just think they didn't want to. I don't know why, but move on to the coffin feed water heater. This is the coffin feed system. Uh, so that's the original packing. Not gonna look through the other stuff. Uh, and show you the tender. Uh, same tender. I mean, maybe a little. I don't think there's any difference at all. But here's the. This is the main difference. Oh, yeah. So you can see. Let me just zoom in. I oh, love it too much. So then you can see the engine. Really interesting look. Uh, 
same back head. But put these together. You can see some of the differences. So this one, you know, obviously there's the front different, the, the steps are a little bit different on that side. Let me check the other side. There's the other side. And then here is that side. You can see there's, the pumps are a little bit different. Uh, steps are a little bit different. Whenever I touch that little thing on the top, it makes me think I broke it, but... Uh, those are the two engines. I'm gonna put those on the track and then show you those guys run. I may put some couplers on it just so I can pull some freight. Yes, these are beautiful engines. I wonder if I could just put that coupler on and double head them. So, right, so now we have the two locomotives on the track. You can kind of see the difference. Uh, both are beautiful engines, as I said earlier, but. I have them double-headed, uh, with some PKD couplers. Hopefully they're the right length. I just used some KD5 couplers. Those should be good, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, so these locomotives have a, uh, dummy front coupler, but it still works. Uh, you can kind of see it just kind of shoved it in there but look at it should work well uh i still don't have a dc well i do have a dc power pack but i didn't feel like setting it up for it just did this video um so i might have a dc power pack in the future just to get re reduce the noise when i run some of my brass engines without dcc but I don't know if it's not really worth it, so I'm just gonna kind of keep it. Cause a lot of the engines that don't have DCC don't have DCC. Will eventually have them, or they're kind of just stuff that I'm keeping, you know, keeping on the layout and then selling. So, that's why a lot of the engines that I plant that I know I'm gonna keep have DCC in sound. So, I'll put this on. I have, another, I have a little uh, Stuart Hobbies engine on there that has a tsunami decoder. But you can hear it's pretty noisy. But I actually haven't seen how these run together. Oh, I know, that's beautiful. But put in some put in some running shots. Uh, it's got a pretty long train on there. I think it's 30 cars with some um, die-cast cars. I don't know. But, yeah. 